Word Curses Word curses are a form of witchcraft that must be broken by the blood of Jesus. Watch who you have around you. I have seen people raise others publicly, but yet curse them privately. Also, be careful of what you speak over yourself. Your own words can be a curse that hinders the blessings of God. Curses are initiated by words, not by ritual. And here's a revelation for most of you. A curse does not have to be spoken by a witch, a warlock, or anyone in the occult to have an effect. Our words have power, power over life and death, as God's word says in Proverbs 18.21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So word curses can be spoken over, over you by God, others, and ourselves. An example of speaking a word curse over yourself would be a, a statement like, I am so stupid. I will never be successful. That is a curse. Parents without intention speak word curses over their children. I know because I had word curses spoken over me, and I even did it to my own kids, not knowing. Okay? The point being is that whether spoken words are intentional or unintentional, a curse is a curse when spoken out loud. That's in Matthew 12, verses 34 to 36. See, Genesis 3, verses 14 and 70 says, The Lord said, The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and the dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Numbers 22, 6 says, Now come and put a curse on those people, because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps then I will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that whoever I bless is blessed, and whoever you curse is cursed. See, there are many more curses spoken in the Word. One of the best known is Deuteronomy 28, verses 15-45. If either you have spoken a word curse over someone or yourself, or if someone else has spoken a word curse over you and your family, or however it goes, it will remain in effect until or unless it is broken. Again, word curses can be broken over us by God can be spoken over us by God, others, and ourselves. It's a choice to speak good or bad things. 1 Peter 3.10 says, For the one who wants to enjoy life and see good days must keep his tongue free from evil and his lips from speaking guile, which is deceit. See, there are natural happenings that can impact our voice. Spiritually, there are demonic attacks, which can also come against our voice. There is a queen mentioned in the Bible named Jezebel, who was a, manip a manipulator and operates closely with the spirit of witchcraft. Jezebel comes to silence the voice of the prophetic. She is used to begin to, bring, to being in control. Has a spirit of pride and wants all of the attention on her and the message she wants to be released. So how can Jezebel silence you? Praying and talking against you, the Jezebel silences you. Praying and talking against you, the, the anointing on your life and the words you have to speak out releases curses into the spiritual atmosphere. There is power in the words we speak, which applies to both Christian and the evil powers of witchcraft operating against Christians. Have you ever been ready to witness to a person and all of a sudden you are straining to get out the words and feel as if you are losing your voice. Attacks against the words you have to speak come out from two sources. One, the Jezebel spirits. These are people in our own churches, our friends, our leaders, and controlling people who don't want what you say to go forth because they cannot control, they want control to be heard or think what they have to say is more important than what you have to say. People in this category want to control which parts of the gospel to send forth and which parts they'd rather not talk about. These people talk gossip 
and slander, and those words go up and out into the spiritual atmosphere and creates a demonic assignment and curses we must combat through prayer. Be careful. Sheep come and wolves clothing. That's in Matthew 7, 15. The next one is spiritual witchcraft spirits. These are people operating through demonic spirits to send forth assignments to hinder your ministry, your preaching, your prayer life, and your teaching. These people gather to pray against you in witchcraft covens and circles. They sit in your meetings and pretend to receive the word, but, but they are there to pray against you and try to stop God's voice from speaking through you. Again, it's a choice whether we speak good or evil over others and ourselves. Proverbs 18.21 reminds us our words have power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. So we are always to be mindful. That's in Matthew 12, verses 34 to 36 says, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks out that which fills the heart. The good man from his inner good treasure brings out good things, and the evil man from his inner evil treasures brings out evil things. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will have to give an accounting for every careless or useless word they speak. That right there should put some fear into you. Mark eleven twenty three says, Leave no room to doubt. We must believe, and it must be God's will. It says, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him. See, prayer to break, we got a prayer here to break a word curse, and it must be prayed out loud, just as the curse was spoken out loud. Remember, everything in heaven is based upon God's law and must be dealt with according to God's law. Okay, Father God, I humbly approach your throne by and through the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Regarding the word curse spoken by the person's name and, uh, and explain the nature of the curse in as much detail as possible, then if it's spoken by you, you will say, Father, please forgive me for using my tongue, which belongs to you as an instrument of, of the enemy. I repent and ask for forgiveness. And now, if it's spoken by another person, Father, I forgive the person's name for speaking this curse over me. It's very easy. It's very simple. Okay? You, you can say, I reject and renounce this curse by the application of the blood of Jesus of Nazareth. I break the curse and thereby render it null and void and of no longer effect in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay. I'm going to speak a prayer now. Papa, your word says in Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue which rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned. And this is and that is, this is my inheritance in the Lord. Right now I condemn every negative word that has been spoken over myself, my family, and my future in the name of Jesus. I lift up speak out what, what it is that you're going you're praying for. And I repent for whatever word you use, okay? And I condemn every negative word I have spoken over myself, my family, and our future. I repent for vows made silently or spoken, and I ask that you release me and all those affected by those things to be released from any ungodly vows. I repent for speaking any words that are contrary to your will, O oh God, and and I break the power of them. Now in the name and authority of Jesus Christ, I also break the power of negative words of others spoken out of their own fear, their anger, their criticism, their offense, malice, their ill will, envy, jealousy, unforgiveness, and bitterness. I break the power of false prophetic words. I break the power of prog prognosticators, physicians, parents, ministers, teachers, peers, and authority figures in our lives that had power to negatively influence us, create fear or harm of our self-image, 
self-esteem, or belief system. I call our belief system back into alignment with God and his word. I break the power of negative words, including those that have evil spirits associated with them, though through the use of conjuring spells, incantations, potions, and all forms of magic and witchcraft. Words and spirit associations that have been assigned to us in order to perpetuate a curse must now be broken and all curses made void. I command in the name of Jesus Christ that all evil spirits associated with these curses to leave me, my family, and all that pertains to our lives and be sent back to hell immediately. I command all open doors to the enemy that originated with these hurtful words to be closed now and the blood of Jesus applied to those doorways. I forbid the enemy from crossing through the blood. I declare that those negative words will no longer ring in my ears, nor in those that have heard or repeated negative condemning words. I declare that words that have been used as a weapon will no longer ring in my in the ears of my loved ones and hinder their faith or their future. From this day forward, I declare their ears shall be deaf to condemning words laced with the spirit of death. All shame, insecurity, inferiority, fear, failure, unworthiness, rejection, loathing, rebellion, lawlessness, idolatry, and perversity that originated from these ungodly words and their effects is now broken off of myself and of all my family members. I declare only faith, peace, joy, love, and confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ shall prosper in their hearts, their minds, and their spirit in Jesus' name. Let the love of your Holy Spirit, of your mercy and acceptance be shed abroad in our hearts. Let there be revelations, truth, and understanding be released into our hearts and minds. Let the counsel of your Holy Spirit unravel every lie and bring us back to the truth that sets us free. Father God, I thank you and Holy Spirit for releasing blessings into my life and that of my loved ones and enabling us to walk with our heads held high. Thank you for breaking every ungodly yoke of bondage and oppression that comes as a result of condemning words. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the fresh start for me and my family. Amen.